Gemini gang, welcome to my channel, Tarot by V Intuitive Teacup. We are going to read your tarot cards here today. Uh, please come into this reading with an open heart, an open mind, a desire to better yourself, and walk away with maybe some new food for thought. Um, oh, oh, you got poppers already, the death card. We'll take it. Scorpio season. Um, it's a general message for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Just remember you guys are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. This is optional advice or guidance, so I highly recommend you take away uh, the things that really resonate with you, what speaks to you, motivates you, empowers you, inspires you. That's my jam. That's what I like to do here today. If you're not feeling that way, it might not be your message this week. You might not be ready to hear it this week, so feel free to check back at another date, okay? Tell me about this uh, Scorpio death card. Beauty's in the eye of the, eye of the beholder is the first thing I'm kind of getting from this. Uh, there could be a transformation or a, a change of heart in seeing someone in a new light. Um, this could almost be something that, that transitions from uh, like a friend zone into someone you end up dating. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, it, it, or something about it, it looks or not what they... Uh, no... It, Something is not what it appears to be. It's hidden under something else. It's veiled. It, it, it could be emotions are being hidden and, and not, you know, being expressed. What, what is this place? A little bit more. Let's see. The devil in reverse. <clears throat> so the devil is fear. It's what keeps us stuck. It's addiction issues. Um, what keeps us chained. Um, it's neg It's more shadow energy. It's negative vibration. Um typically right you know every now and then we can we can put a positive spin on the devil if it's in reverse though i don't necessarily dislike it if we're, if we are emerging and releasing ourselves from the shackles um i feel like our voice is being expressed which is very important for gemini um in particular um yeah expression of communication or, or expression of, of feelings maybe something here is transforming um, and it's almost, it's something that has been under the surface for a very long time. And it's almost like you're starting to see the, the buds spring through the earth or I don't know. Let's, let's, ooh. I see 10 of cups. We'll take that. I see the queen of wands and the queen of cups. So you have kind of fire and water energy coming through here. So if you are in a female, female relationship, this is especially for you guys. <clears throat> oh, wow, you have a lot of cards coming through. So what is this about? The Ten of Cups is about the High Priestess. So more emphasis on the cancer, on the family. Oh, okay, so some of you, there there could be a pregnancy here. The idea of it's been under the surface and you didn't know and it's just starting to, to bud or to show itself. Um, okay, got it. And, and so some of you may have had reservations about becoming a parent or starting a family. Oh, well, this is so cute. But I almost get the idea that you hear the news and it actually makes you really happy. It makes you really excited. It could also be the idea that if you were told that you, you know, or, or if you struggled with fertility or you always sort of assumed that wasn't going to be your story, I, I would say, I, and I, I don't say this a lot, I say it sparingly, you might be sort of magically surprised. Something may come through, especially with that... Um, we have the lunar eclipse in Taurus and there's that Uranian planet Uranus energy coming through where it's, it's shocking and unexpected. That's what I mean. Uh, family, family type stuff and, and possibly babies. Um, the high priestess is also the silent one, the one who represents um, sometimes secrets, but following our intuition over necessarily the more logical um rational side of things very much air energy right gemini this is like trusting your gut and trusting your intuition on things and also that whole previous message of something that was being held back or, or held underneath and not said i think it is being expressed now it's certainly being expressed emotionally um almost like don't uh what is that expression like don't Tell me how you feel. Show me. I think it is being show, shown to you with a lot of like warmth and a lot of, I'm going to say it, Gemini, get ready, like some, some mushy, gushy energy. <laughs> and there we have it. You pregnant, Gemini. Go, go get yourself a pregnancy test. <laughs> Um, obviously I know that's not everybody's message. Knight of Swords. Yeah, it, it was something that you were, uh, you were defending yourself against or, hold on, or you may have been dealing with a partner who was kind of defensive about, maybe not defensive, but someone who sort of had a lot of reservations about sort of moving into this next chapter in life. Um, 
And again, it had to do with fear. I don't think it has anything to do with you're not the one, I'm questioning you. It, it's, it really has to do very likely with their own childhood and not maybe feeling like they have it all together. You know, the fear that, well, you know, I have anxiety or I have a depression and I don't want to pass that on to my kid. Or th there was internal fears about sort of, I'm just going to say like, reproducing and uh, you know the idea of the spawn or passing something on that that this person didn't like about themselves it's being transformed in a new way though and i have to say this this actually seems very positive um and i also actually love that the knight of swords is coming up too because it, it goes in line with uh, this idea of spreading communication spreading exciting words things that were kept secret good news coming to the surface also it, it's almost like um you can do anything now. I'm hearing hit me with your best shot. Put up your dukes. Let's get down to it. There's something like I, I can do anything. I got this. Like there's there's a, a facing of your fear and it might even be a domino effect. One area of your life you were really forced to stand up and, and um, lean into your courage, into your bravery. There's this very thrilling um, nourishing happy effect that that has on you where it's like I want to get back in the ring I'm ready to do it again you've proven something to yourself your your confidence has been sort of uh I don't know what the word is ex not expedited uh it's been you understand what I'm trying to say it's been it's like 2.0 Gemini <laughs> Yeah, your confidence on something or, or your excitement and your willingness to get in there and um, get in there enthusiastically. Like, I don't mean it in a combative way, but if you're ready to throw some punches, you're ready to take some ownership. Okay, well, almost like Rocky Balboa. That's the perfect image for what I'm getting. It's like you're running up the staircase, but like you're dancing because you've proved something to yourself, something that seemed impossible or challenging or something you maybe avoided or tried to escape for years. You, you finally met it eye to eye and forced your way through and there was something very rewarding about it where you're like, I want to do it again. And it's like, you know, that, that fear, that exhilaration of riding the roller coaster, you're in line, right? And you're kind of, the dread is building up and you get there and you're just like, oh God, this is my last chance to get out of this right before they, you know, lock me into the sea. You do it and then you come out like, oh my God, let's do it again. <laughs> Some, okay, so this may even have to do with having a second child too, especially for, for a, a couple or, or um, yeah, a couple who was very hesitant to even have a child because, again, reservations, hesitation, um, you know, fear stemming from your own childhood. I think it's such a positive experience that you're like, let's do it again. Um, and, and I actually think for some of you, if you are in a male-female relationship, it's coming from the um, masculine energy that's like, yes, I want to do it. Absolutely. Right now. Let's go. Like, I'm so excited. <laughs> it, it, I, I like it. I like it a lot. This just kind of seems like a happy family. Um I don't mind it, the devil too much because it's showing up in reverse. So to me, this is indicative of conquering our own fears, facing our own demons and, and coming out on the other end like, yeah, I beat that motherfucker, right? Like there's something like, oh, I got this. You're flexing your muscles this week. Um, you're showing up loud and proud and I love it. Um, and it, there isn't even arrogance to it. There's just, you're, you are glowing with pride of, of us, of self-accomplishment um, whereas this could be a more like you know self-defeatist attitude or negativity or pessimism or all that good stuff I, I don't know whatever it is you're going toe to it's like you're going toe to toe with the devil and you know spoiler alert you win you win um if this doesn't have to do with pregnancy i would i would offer that some of you gemini's may want to look at that in terms of a metaphor of Seeds that you have been planting um, for a while, they are starting to pop and bloom, and you're so excited to see sort of the the fruits of your labor, um, the reward, the light at the end of the tunnel, right? If this is darkness, this is this is light. You know, Saturn can be sort of the oppressive. Uh, um, what is a good word? Uh, yeah, the oppressive. Uh, sometimes it's like father. Sometimes it's like father time, right? The idea of having limits and obstacles, and you know, you're at the end of your deadline, and are you going to do it? It really it forces you to kind of meet your maker a little bit. This is sort of the opposite. The Empress is Venus energy. Well, maybe not the opposite, but it's a very uh, different energy. Um, it, it's very much linked to Taurus and the idea of sort of natural beauty, being of the earth, you know. Expressing gratitude to just the everyday small things in life, you know, it, it, Taurus is like the sensualist of the zodiac. So appreciating, you know, the smell of the flowers and the taste of the wine and the coziness of the blanket and the fireplace and, you know, cuddling with your person or whatever this is. It's appreciating the finer things in life, too. There's an element of luxury with Venus. 
Um, but it doesn't have to be, you don't have to put a price tag on it, though, because something about this, it, it, that doesn't even make sense in the scenario. It doesn't really have to do with the price tag. Um, yeah, it has to do with, like, the, the felt emotion behind it. This is a this is a tremendous accomplishment for you. Your your wishes and dreams are coming true. This is like the uh, the Cinderella story, <clears throat> and all of the and you know the Cinderella story will look different for all of you. I'm not saying for everyone out there it's it's marriage and babies and all that, but if it is, I would say manifest this shit right. You know, screenshot this, put a picture of it on your wall. If if the energy is coming through in the Gemini reading, I take that to mean it is available to you. Um, but Saturn does say you have to do the work to earn it. Nothing is handed to you with Saturn. Um, there is no, um, is nepotism the right word? I'm not sure that's the right word. Um, acquiring things simply because of who you know? Absolutely not. Saturn is like, no, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle a bit. But in that, you're going to come to see just how strong you are. And, and it feels so freaking good at the end of it, Gemini. I love it. I love it. All right. Um... I suppose that could be career related too. Again, I'm, I'm going to leave it up to you to interpret the finer details because that's not what I do in general readings. Um, what else? What else can I tell Gemini? Um, in terms of zodiac signs, you have very strong Cancer energy with the High Priestess. You have some Taurus, maybe Libra here. You have uh, Scorpio and Capricorn. <clears throat> Some of you may have recently gotten out of a long-term relationship with a Capricorn, and it's almost like the next one ends up being your your forever person, or the one who you really want to strongly commit to or, or sort of grow something with in the long term, if that makes sense. And of course, you also have Gemini here, too, so you might be dealing with another Gemini. Let's see, the Four of Discs. Oh, this card always makes me so sad. It's like there's... There's someone who needs help, but they don't know how to ask for help. It's like they have to walk through this door, but their hands are full. Is that you, Gemini? Are you not, are you not asking for help? Are you not delegating responsibility? Um, I'm being asked to ask you, where do you think you might be being asked to let something go? Where are you clinging on to or holding on to something? And especially with fear, too. I almost see this as the kid who wakes up in the middle of the night because he had a bad dream. And it's like he wants to knock on mom and dad's door and be like, I had a bad dream. Can I, can I sleep in your bed tonight? But he can't do it. So this person, this poor kid, I just, I want to help him. <laughs> also reminds me of Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. I don't know. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. Maybe someone's name is Kevin. Kevin! <laughs> There's, there's a couple things here. Um, now might be a good time to face your fear, um, to get rid of the skeletons in your closet. Ooh, we can also look at it like that, like hearing those voices, right? Hearing that it's your calling to move forward with something, even though it's kind of scares the shit out of you. I say do it. Walk through the door. Um, but th again, Scorpio energy, this four of pentacles energy, you're going to have to let something go. You physically can't go through that door. You can't open it when you're holding on to all these things you think you need, but you don't need them all. Um, there, there's something important to that message. This is the sun in Capricorn, so have faith that what you're being asked to release or sacrifice, it is going to help you get ahead. Um, it, it's part of the growing process. It's part of the learning process. This, I, I don't know how this relates. If it has to do with a job, it probably has to do with money. You may get a very good opportunity, but it feels like part of having to accept this offer or this opportunity, it feels like two steps forward, one step back. And you're like, so, well, maybe I'm really not gaining that much ground. No, you are. And I, I, the only way I can think to translate this just as an example is like you may get a job that you're very excited about, but it's not the salary they uh, initially offered it to you or, the, you know, whatever. There's something about the benefits package or the commute is worse or that's what I mean. It's like you are going to have to sacrifice something here, but you have to know that you're being initiated into a new chapter. You are going to walk through this through this door here. Um, but are you ready to? Because some of you are going to decline the offer, and then I think you're going to go back and realize, oh, I, I shouldn't have done it. Um, and I don't, I don't believe that we're ever going to miss out on opportunities that are truly meant for us. That's just my personal belief. It might not be yours. So that's the thing. I don't do fear-based readings. So say you're like, oh, I want to go through this door, but I'm just not ready. Okay, then you're not going to go through the door. Your situation probably isn't going to change. I feel like this opportunity will come back around later after you've done some, some work on yourself, and the universe is going to check in and see if you're ready. But... I don't know. It's almost like you're looking for solutions in the wrong place. The solution is right in front of you. It's, it's actually not that complicated. So, it, you know, very Gemini. And you, you might be self-sabotaging by being so stuck in your head about all the decisions and all the possibilities and all the things that could go, go, go wrong, but what should I do? And, you know, almost that like... Um, 
that mental hum or that mental buzz, it's like you just can't turn it off. I I can tell you the solution is you got to drop one. You have to, because that's how you're going to get through the door. I think what's on the other side of the door will will be well worth it. I I feel like it has something to do with long-term dreams. Um, But yeah, you're right. There's something you're going to have to give up. And Four of Pentacles, you have to remember, it's early on. So this isn't something that you've worked for years and years on that you're going to have to give up. I, I don't know. It, it does have this idea of a few steps forward and a couple steps back. But if you keep doing that, ultimately, you're going to see the progress. So I, I think you guys need to hear that. The sun in Capricorn, illuminating your achievements and your ability to, to climb, to climb the mountain. <clears throat> To know, yeah, a similar message, to, to know your own capacity of for endurance. That's important. Yeah, interesting. I, almost, I was almost getting five of cups, but I didn't know how to link them. So that's interesting that it came out. Let's see. Let's see if I can figure it out with a visual. <clears throat> yeah, jumping to the worst case scenario. I, I see you guys doing that. Yeah, you just need to move on it. You just need to have, have trust that if this opportunity came your way or fell into your lap, I... You know, bear with me, Gemini, but I almost think it's like it would be silly for you not to do it. It would be foolish for you not to do it because you've earned this spot in line. Do you see how, like, the key is literally right there? It's right on the floor. (laughs) So if you're looking for solutions and answers every which way, it's right in front of you. Practice situational awareness. You And the thing is, High Priestess says, you already know. You know what the answer is. You probably know what the sacrifice will be. It's just coming to that conclusion. Are you ready to do it? I think most of you are. Well, I know you're ready. If you will or not, that's my question. I think most of you will. I love that the, that word will is coming through with the Eight of Wands. Um, yeah. Uh, communications. Releasing the negative ones, for one thing. This is a Mercury card. It's tied to Sagittarius's uh, uh, zodiac sign. So messages being sent out. It's about swift, rapid action and travel. Um, and the bow and arrow points up, right? The arrow moves swiftly, directly through the air. Sagittarius is not an energy that really is terribly sentimental or looks back. Of course, they have that capacity to, but they're much more focused on, on the future. They're future-oriented signs. So that, that's what I mean. I think that's good advice to you. This is about what you're building towards in your future, not just what you have in front of you right now. Um, and, and with this, right, it's going to be fun. Don't get caught up in all the details of, oh, my God, the stress of what will be. And if I take this, am I ready? The universe thinks you're ready. If the opportunity came around, you are ready. Um, yeah, you are your own best guide when it comes to wisdom on this subject right now because you've been there. Only you knows your story. Only you knows what you really want and need and desire in, the, your, in this life. You know, so take it up with your spirit guides. But I, I think this is going to be a tremendous journey up ahead for you. And it might literally involve travel. Part of this is is making sure that what you're doing has meaning. That's very important. The Sagittarian energy, this earth energy, we can't get too caught up in, okay, well, it's practical, it's good, you know, the paycheck's good. Absolutely. Those are all very important things. But are you enjoying what you're doing? Um, and, And maybe you don't have to abandon it entirely if you're not. I'm not saying that, but you need to add some spice, some zest. You need to introduce parts that are a little bit more magical or a little bit more... I would say different, something that's foreign to you. This is going to get you, okay, thank you. This is going to get you out of your comfort zone in a really beautiful way. Trust that you can do it. Um, Again, don't fall into this sort of limiting belief of self. We already kind of had that going on over here. Um, Virgo can be a very humble sign, but we have to remember, you also need to know how to shine your light. Sometimes you do need to sort of, you know, take the stage and shine. It's your duty. You have a sun sign. We all have one, Gemini. So I love that I said take the stage. That, That feels appropriate for Gemini. Um, yeah, something about a Virgo maybe coming in too. I was trying to, I was trying to see if I could get anything more on love, but this, I don't know, this seems to be more like career. I'm not sure. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The tortoise says slow and steady wins the race. Um, but when good opportunities come your way, sometimes it's good to just go with it. Um, entirely up to you if you, if you want to choose to do so. Love that. That's cute. The twins, the Gemini, (laughs) the two of discs. All right, that's what I got for you guys. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye, Gemini.